Hi. Now in this tutorial, what I want to show you is how we can take a parametric curve, and I've got an example here of the parametric curve x equals 2 cos t and y equals sine 2t. What I want to show you is how we can find the area of a particular region, and the region that I'm looking at is this shaded region here, going between x is 0 and x is 2. And to do this requires parametric integration. So if we're asked to find this area, how are we going to do it? Now we should already know that to find the area under any curve, say of the form y equals some function of x, that that is given by integrating y with respect to x going between limits, say, x1 to x2. In this particular example, our x1 would be 0 and we're going to x2 equaling 2. So what I would have here is that we've got an integral going from 0 to 2 of y with respect to x. Now we've got a problem here because we need to get y in terms of x if we're to integrate with respect to x. And as you can see up here, because we've got a parametric equation, y isn't in terms of x, it's in terms of t. Now you could try and get the Cartesian equation, that is try and get y in terms of x by using some kind of trigonometric identity to relate these two together, but that's a lot of work and it might be quite difficult at times. So there is a way around this and it is parametric integration because what we do is we think of this as the integral and now instead of writing dx, we've got our y there, but instead of writing dx we introduce dx by dt and then we integrate this with respect to t. It's as if these dt's cancel out, just leaving us with y dx. But because we're integrating with respect to t now, not with respect to x, our limits must change. They must change to equivalent t limits that go with the 0 and 2. And to work that out, what we need to do is go back to what x was. And in this particular example, we know that x equals 2 cos t. So in order to find out the value of t at this particular value where x is 0, we've just got to say when x is 0 and work out what that value of t would be. So that would mean that therefore 2 cos t must equal 0. And if we divide by 2, it means that, therefore, cos t would equal 0. And that would lead to t equaling pi upon 2, pi upon 2 radians. So that when x is 0, the corresponding t value would be pi upon 2. Let's just put that in there, that at that point, t equals pi upon 2. Now what about when x is 2 at this point here? Let's find out what t is then. So when x equals 2, we've got 2 equals 2 cos t. So 2 cos t must equal 2. So if we divide both sides by 2, cos t must equal 1. And t would have to be 0 in that case, so t equals 0. Now it might be a bit off-putting at first. Notice how this bottom limit is greater than this top limit. So don't go around changing these around, okay? Just stick with what you've got. At x is 2, t is equal to 0. Now we've got to be very careful here in questions like this. We want to make sure that we're going to be working out this shaded area. Because when t goes from 0 to pi upon 2, 
Are we going round this part of the loop or are we going round this part of the loop? So to check that out, what I'm going to do is take a value of t somewhere between 0 and pi upon 2 and see if I get a positive y value. Let's say when t equals pi upon 4. When t equals pi upon 4, if I substitute it in for the y value, we get the sine of 2 times pi upon 4. In other words, sine of just simply pi upon 2. Sine of pi upon 2 is plus 1. So you can see that this is the point up here. This is the point when t equals pi upon 4. So clearly we're going round in this sense, round the curve. Let's just put a little arrow there. As we go from t equals naught to t equals pi upon 2, we're going round this top part of the curve. So we can be assured that this is working out then the area of this shaded region. OK, well let's just border this off, OK, because it is just kind of working on the side. And what we'll do is we'll carry on then working out what this area is going to be. So the area then is equal to, as we've seen, the integral from pi upon 2 to 0. Now of y multiplied by dx by dt with respect to t. So y we just substitute in is sine of 2t. And we need to multiply this by dx by dt. Now if we know that x is equal to 2 cos t, then we should be able to work out what dx by dt is. So also dx by dt then equals, and in the usual way, if we differentiate 2 cos t with respect to t, we're going to get minus 2 sine t. So minus 2 sine t. And we can substitute this in for dx by dt. So we'll put that in as minus 2 sine t. And then all of this is integrated with respect to t. So don't forget that dt then on the end. Now to do an integral like this, we just need to tidy it up first of all. And you should know that sine 2t is the same as 2 sine t cos t. Well let's just put in the integral sign first of all. We've got the integral going from pi upon 2 then to 0. And for sine 2t then that's 2 sine t cos t. And that's being multiplied then by minus 2 sine t. And that's integrated with respect to t. So we could do 2 times minus 2, and that's going to be minus 4. We could bring that out the front of the integral. So we've got minus 4 multiplied by the integral that goes from pi upon 2 to 0. And then we've got sine t times another sine t, so that's sine squared t, multiplied by cos t. And that's integrated with respect to t. Now we should be familiar with integrals like this. This is one that we could do just by sight. We should be able to do that one by sight. What it comes from is differentiating sine cubed t. And if you differentiated sine cubed t with respect to t, remember this is like sine t all to the power 3. By the chain rule, you would get 3 out the front, drop the power by 1, so that would be sine squared t, and then multiply by the differential of sine t, which is cos t. So you're going to get 3 sine squared t cos t if you differentiated this. Now we don't want the 3, so we can divide out that 3. So we end up with minus 4 thirds sine cubed t going between the limits pi upon 2 then to 0. Now if you're unsure of differentiating sine cubed t with respect to t, I'll do it at the end of the uh, video for you. But if we now substitute our limits in, starting with the 0 first of all, then we've got the sine of 0 
which is 0. Qubit, of course, that's going to be 0 still. Then we subtract what we get when we put pi upon 2 in for t. Now the sine of pi upon 2 is 1. Cube that, it's still 1. So you've got 0 minus 1. So minus 4 thirds times minus 1 gives us a final result of plus 4 thirds. And because we're finding an area, I prefer to write square units, or you could write units squared. Okay? So, hopefully that's given you some idea then how we go about doing parametric integration. And in this example, it was related to the area under a curve. So, this is the important formula then to try and remember when you're doing parametric integration. You change your x values to t values in the limits. Substitute for your y value. Differentiate your x value with respect to t and integrate all of that with respect to t. So do learn this part, okay? And then everything else will correspond to whatever question you're given. Now I did say that I would show you how to differentiate the sine cube t if you are a bit unsure of that. Now if I've got y equals sine cube t and I want to find dy by dt, what I need to do is use the chain rule. And so if we use the chain rule, should be familiar with this, if not just go on my website, look under the chain rule. But if we want to find, say, dy by dt, it's exactly the same as dy by d something multiplied by the same d something by dt. And what am I going to choose? Well, I could choose, say, du, as long as I multiply it by du over dt. So what I'm going to say is that I'm going to let u equal sine t. So that means that we have got y equals uq, because remember, this is the same as y equals sine t, all cubed. So that means y equals u cubed. So when it comes to working out what dy by dt is, using the chain rule, we've got to do dy by du first of all. So if you differentiate y with respect to u, you're going to get 3u squared. So that's going to be 3 multiplied by u squared, but u is sine t, so that's going to be sine t all squared. And then we've got to multiply it by du by dt. But if u equals sine t, du by dt is going to be cos t. So if we clean this up, we've got 3 sine squared t cos t. Now in the integral that we were doing, we were faced with trying to integrate sine squared t cos t with respect to t. So what did we differentiate to give us this? Well it certainly wasn't sine cubed t because we've already seen that that gives us 3 sine squared t cos t. But if we were to multiply this by a third, then because this is a constant times this function, there'll be a third in this one, and there'll be a third in this. So we'll have a third of the 3. So that will cancel out and just leave us with sine squared t cos t. So you can see that we need that third back in there. So that's how I came to get that answer, that the integral of sine squared t cos t came from differentiating a third sine cubed t. OK, well I'll just take you back anyway now to that problem again, just in case you want to go back and have a look at it. And here it is. OK, well I hope that's been of some use to you. And that brings us now to the end then of this tutorial.